Hello and welcome once again. This is Nelson Karanja for Global Hope Media. Today's tutorial, we continue with our exploration of the 3D environment in After Effects. After Effects has been introducing the 3D environment with quite a broad range of features that will enable us to handle 3D placement or compositions uh, purely in After Effects because some of these things we were previously having to do them with uh, that party uh, plugins such as Element 3D as well as Blender, Maya and all the others. But now that we can do this purely in After Effects, we we'll just want to test uh, the new features and see what we can get out of it. So straight away, let me create a composition here and call it Mountain Cottage. And I'll let that 50 seconds, that's okay, I'll leave that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in quite a bunch of assets. And I've created a folder here called used 3D assets so that anytime I use a model, I can drag it here and get it out of here so that I can also keep track of what I have used and what I haven't. I'll go ahead and bring in uh, the rock mountain and uh, straight away, I would like to have these two views so that I can see what I'm working with. I want to bring in the winter cottage next. I'll make that comp size and I want to rotate it slightly and push it back. And going by the size of our mountains, I think this needs to be a bit smaller. So I'll go ahead and put that at 50. I'll go and bring in the abandoned well and I'm going to pull it down on this one. And I'll use this one to push it back. That bit looks okay. I will adjust it uh, once I know everything is in the scene. I'll drag that one to used assets. I'll go ahead and bring in white large. I'll put that at 2.5. And I will push it to the side of our house. Let's push that one down. Let me push, push it somewhere there. I'll pull that one out and then I can bring in the tail head of a bomb, I think. I'll let this one be at 7.5. And I'm going to bring it down. I can position that one there. A sun clock, uh, that is a feature I would want to have here. Make comp size. This one I would want to adjust the anchor point. It's somewhere at the top and I would rather it was at the bottom. To do that, we can either hit a Y on our keyboard or you can just come up here and click here, same thing, keyboard and drag that one out there. And to get out of this anchor mode, you hit V or go back to your arrow. Okay, uh, what do we have here? Uh, wooden stamp. Let's bring that one in. Maybe at this point, I could bring in a camera. So what we can do is go, bring in camera. I'm just going to create a camera from this current view. Let me just rename this to camera view. And we can pull back on our camera to see the rest of the area. Let's bring in the wall and see whether we can use it somewhere. Uh, low wall, make comp size. Let's bring it down. Let's turn it. Push it back. Let's go to our camera view. Okay, it's no old stamp. Let's bring that. And make it a comp size. And make it comp size and we say okay this is a tree stamp and if we turn our camera a little bit to that side you see where it is it's a bit too big I'll scale it down by half 50 looks a bit okay to me and I can come again nearer with my camera and now it looks like it's a bit 
too far off. Let's see. Turn that a little bit. And you can perhaps position it here. Let's see if I pull it up. Yeah, it's still a bit big. I can put that to 40. Uh, let me save that. Control S. Uh, mountain Cottage. Uh, this is saving my project. I have a Raste mine cut. It's like something that I would find in this zone. Make comb size and make it 10. And let's rotate. Yeah, it's hanging in the air. Let's bring it down. Yeah, the anchor point. I want to change that. Control. Uh, just just hit Y, not Control. Just Y. And hit V to get out. And then I can scale it down. What is this? Uh, mountain fountain. Whatever that is, I have no idea, but let's bring it in. And it's gigantic. Let's scale it down by half. Let's go to camera view. Let's turn around. Okay. Now, I think I'll leave it there so that when I turn my camera around, I can be able to see it. Then we have a rifle and we have node generator. And bring that one in. Make comp size. And if I go closer with my camera, if we get closer, we can put this one back. Okay, that's fine. Leave it there. Get it out of there. Now we have what? Uh, HDRI map and that's a free ancient character. That will be the last one. And here is our rifle. Make comp size. And I would want to bring it where this generator is. So I'll hit position for this old generator. Hit P on the rifle and paste on it. Okay, now let us get closer. Okay, now let's get this weapon repositioned and to rotate it, um, maybe 270. Push it down. A little bit. Let's save our work in case we run into a problem. We are almost there now. I'll go ahead and put in an environment light and cast shadows. 100% shadows. We can always adjust that. Now, if you check this one, uh, we can either use uh, the default or bring in our own uh, HDRI map, which I have a, a file here from uh, Polyhaven, which I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to direct our light to use that particular uh, map. Okay, at the moment we do that, that goes away now. I would like to use the same file to serve as our, back, uh, as our background. The only thing is if I turn it on, our camera does not detect it. Uh, as if you, if you check my last tutorial, if now we come here and we move our camera, you see it doesn't get affected. So we have to resort to using a, a different method. I'll go ahead and switch that one off. I'll come here and insert a new solid and I'll call that background uh, environment as well. Uh, the color doesn't matter. It can be anything. It will go away. I will put that and I'll drag it to the bottom. And I'm going to search for CC environment. There it is. You can just double click if you have your layer highlighted. And there it is. So I'm going to direct this CC environment to pick the same layer. 
tablemountain.exr, which is the same one we are using for our environment light. And if I do that, it will load. So there we are. Now you can see our background is there. And now if you come and you move the camera around, you can now see that your background is moving in response to the camera, which you couldn't do that before. And if you see back here, you can actually see the background. So that is what this does. And that's why it's important to use this uh, CC environment on a background layer. Now let's go to our environment light. Let's go to light options. I would want to increase the light intensity maybe to around 135 and see. I want to see the shadows. The shadows are on uh, 100. That's okay. Let's go to transform and rotate that light until we are able to position the shadows. Uh, I think it's easier to see it from this top view. But there, I think that's fine. Okay, I'll leave it there. Yeah, I think I want to push that cottage just a little bit more down into the uh, into the ground. I think that's better. And that also means that this object here is not on the ground. Now, I've downloaded a model that has animation. I'm going to bring right here and uh, make a comp size. It's hanging in the air somewhere. Let's bring him down to us. Let's scale him down to about 25% of that. Now let's change our camera. It's 36. Let's change that to 16 and see what we see now. Now, this is the new feature that has been added by After Effects. Come to this character now. You will find previously we only had compositing options where we had shadows accept shadows and all that but now we have an animation module here and depending on how your object was animated uh, you will have different options here if they are all baked into one in that case you just select uh, whatever animation is there and now my character is animated and if i come here and i hit play hopefully i should be able to see my character move there you go my ancient ninja okay that's fine one of the things i am now that i am able to see from this perspective i think we shrunk our our discipline quite a bit too much shouldn't have shrunk it that much so we can pull it back and we can pull our broken tail right. Easy. I think we have most of the things that uh, we need in this particular scene the light could be a bit better but right now my computer is struggling so let's come here add some ambient light and I'll give it uh, this is ambient. I'll give it some tinge of blue. We can go in and reduce the intensity, maybe 50%. Now we can go ahead and start setting our camera movement. It's sad I can't make him loop. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Save. Let's go fix our camera views. I'm going to fix our point of interest, position, and orientation. I'm going to put keyframes for those. Let me go to this view and uh, let's just go to the top and see where this camera is. That's not like, yeah, there it is. 
end our camera. See the camera settings. This is 24 mm. Let's see if we put 35. Okay. Now I want this camera to start by being very close to this man. Almost like a medium shot. Front. We we'll get closer to his face. So that marks the end of our tutorial. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, uh, this is Nelson Karanja for Global Oak Media. Please continue to support us. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. Please click the like button and support our work. Thank you very much. Until next time, have a wonderful time.